Hey, I recognize you. Yeah, I saw you on the <laughs> elevator. How's it going? Pretty good, how you doing? I'm okay, yeah. and I recognize you too. Hi, <laughs> uh, it's, oh, it's easy. Hello. Frank Sweet. Hi, how's it nice going? How's everything going so far? Yeah, good, man. Yeah, I'm just eating a shitload of food, so I'm yeah. in a food slump. Are you full? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, these kind of things they feed you well, right? I know, they do, yeah, too well. <laughs> and don't forget the little candies. Oh, can you eat those? That's what those are. Yeah, those are candy. I thought they were pebbles. <laughs> no, these are pebbles. They're oh, little candy. candy. They're little candy. Chocolate. Chocolate. I'll prove it. Chocolate. Yeah, yeah, yeah eat one. Yeah, it's for real. It's chocolate. They're very good. Mm. Yeah, I thought they were pebbles. I just want to make sure you're just taking the interview and not anything else. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Jim puts pebbles in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask you a, a question about playing an American. Uh, uh, is it easier for you to play an American with a cast of other, in Ameri uh, other Americans or playing English in a film like The Boleyn Girl where you have Americans playing English? Oh, which, is, <laughs> which is more difficult or which is more interesting? Yeah, obviously um, doing the American accent was more difficult. You know, doing the other Boleyn Girl, was, it was a kind of heightened, you know, a posher, kind of more royal kind of uh, way of speaking. So well, it still wasn't my natural kind of speaking voice. Uh, but yeah, doing the American accent was, was, a, was, a, was a big challenge for me. But I mean, it definitely helped having everybody else around me that was American. And you know, you just kind of latch onto the sounds that you're kind of hearing around you and just hope for the best, you know. So, but yeah, it, it was actually, it was interesting watching kind of Natalie and Scarlett go through what I then went through, you know. I kind of respected them more after, <laughs> after I'd been through my kind of uh, experience doing 21. Because everyone said that, you know, they were trying to get the English accent. And it's hard, you know, it's really hard suddenly having to sort of train your mind and your mouth to just comp speak in a completely different way to what you're used to. That was a different British accent and, and across the universe was a different British yeah, accent. Yeah, that was a, what we call a Scouser accent, which is a Liverpool accent. Yeah, so again, a completely different, a different accent. I mean, I get, they're all hard. I mean, it's never easy, it's never kind of easy. One's never kind of... You know, uh, Liverpool, I guess, was slightly easier only because you, you know, I've been aware, you know, just coming from England, you're aware of the kind of different accents around your, your area. But yeah, the American accent was a was a challenge, definitely. Were there certain words that were harder than others to, to get? Yeah, dollars and cards, which are like two words that I had to say all the fucking time. Uh, yeah, I mean, there was like a dialect coach on the set, and uh, you know, we were just kind of battled between each other to say, you know, say cards. Cards, no, no, cards, cards, no, cards, cards, no, cards, <laughs> cards, yes, cards, no. And it just it kind of went on for, for hours. <laughs> Did you audition for this part and have to have the accent pre-prepared for the audition? Or how yeah, I put myself on a tape. I was asked uh, to put myself on a tape. So I knew that the, the director was kind of interested in me. It wasn't just a kind of cold, you know, I just put myself on tape and sent it off and hoped for the best. Like I was asked... Um, by Robert, if I would put myself, do a, read a few scenes from the script, um, and I just did a kind of bodge job, kind of cam, camcord kind of thing, held, you know, and didn't think too much of it. I was filming the other bullying girl at the time, so I was kind of stuck out in, you know, rural England in the middle of nowhere, trying to find like a, anyone with a camcorder, you know. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, I kind of sent it off. And I thought, well, there's no way I'm going to get the job now, you know, I totally screwed it up. And uh, yeah, and then. Robert, and I did an American accent on that, um, you know, as good as I could at that point. So I guess he kind of believed that I could, with a bit of work, kind of pull it off, I guess. Had he seen your previous work, or...? or? He'd seen uh, a bit of Across the Universe, I think, yeah, which is what gave him, you know, he became aware of me through that, yeah. How was it auditioning for that movie? Yeah, a whole different experience completely. I mean, at that point, yeah, I was completely, you know, unknown, just sort of, Kid off the, off the walked in off the street kind of thing. Uh, I mean, I'd been doing some acting and stuff like that previously, and uh, and I just I've been in a band for about three years, which had just split up. So I was really kind of wandering around, really not sure what I was going to do with myself at that point. So then I heard that they were doing auditions for a Beatles musical, which I didn't think was a very good idea really at the time. <laughs> I was like, mm, that sounds horrible. Um, but went along anyway. Thank God. And then, uh, yeah, for that, I mean, luckily, I mean, I was, it, was, it was to my benefit that I had that attitude, I think. 
because you know I, I didn't care for it very much I wasn't particularly nervous I just kind of went in and I sang a few songs on my guitar and I think if I'd have known what was in store and I didn't know Julie Tamer was directing it I knew nothing about it other than it was a Beatles musical so uh, yeah I think it wasn't until the third recall where they said oh we'd like to send you to New York to meet the director and, uh, and I said oh well, you know who's directing it and he said oh it's Julie Tamer and I was like oh <laughs> so then I got nervous and then I was you know and I was so aware of all of her work you know and I was such a fan of Frida the movie and I'd seen it you know good three or four times and Titus and dragged to the Lion King thinking oh god it's going to be some awful musical about a lion you know and then was just like oh my god so I knew that she had the ability if she could do that with that you know if you give her a whole lot of Beatles songs I, I, I then started thinking okay this is something that's going to be interesting definitely had you seen uh, Kevin Spacey working on the London stage before? I know he's head of the old Vic now. Yeah, I hadn't. Uh, he invited me to his play when, when he found out that I'd got the part. He kind of phoned me up and I met him. We had lunch and then, uh, and then I went to go and see his play. So that was the first time I'd seen him. Yeah, and I was just sitting in the crowd like, wow, I'm just going to make a film with that guy. <laughs> what was it like working with him? It was great. You know, he's an amazing actor, an amazing guy. You know, just somebody that you've seen in so many films all through your life and then suddenly you're kind of, you know, you're working opposite him. And, you know, any time you work with someone who's really good at what they do, it just kind of instinctively kind of, you know, helps you, I think. How about Lawrence Fishburne? Did you have any? Yeah, the same deal with that. Yeah, I mean, the same, I mean yeah, mine and Lawrence's main interaction was just him being the shit out of me. <laughs> so, uh, which, which was an experience. Uh, and it was great, you know, he intimidated me off the camera as much as he did on camera for that particular day. Which, you know, I love all that stuff, you know, when you really kind of get into it and you're really kind of, you're playing hard, I guess. You know, and then uh, I remember I had my hands kind of tied by my back and he was kind of sizing up his shot, you know. And, I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> and he said, uh, he goes, Jim, you don't mind if I, uh, you know, give you a little tap, do you? <laughs> um, so yeah, then we do, you know, we, it was an intense scene to kind of film. And then, you know, at the end, we sort of gave each other a man hug. <laughs> <laughs> do you play cards yourself? No, I don't. No, I have never played cards, ever. So it was a whole new thing for me. It was like blackjack camp, you know, we, sort of, we would be sent off to like learn, you know, the kind of basic strategy and when to hit and when to do this and how to hold yourself at a table and da 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 and all that, you know. Um, and then just kind of pushed out there to lose our own money. <laughs> but uh, did Jeff teach you any tricks? He tried, yeah, he certainly tried. Uh, you know, he, you know, they sat me down and they explained to me the kind of how, how it works and we sort of went through all the cards and we set up kind of fake scenarios and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I, I, I understood it in theory, but putting it into practice is just way too difficult, way too difficult. Yeah, he was actually saying he wasn't allowed near the table, is that right? Were you there for any? Yeah, no, I mean, Jeff, it was funny, I used to play, and Jeff would kind of be stood behind me, you know, tutting at all my decisions. And, and uh, But yeah, he's, if, the minute he sits down, he's kind of like, pounced upon me, about 20 minutes, half an hour. You know, they know him. It's just incredible that he kind of created such a, such a sort of scam there, that they're all completely aware of who he is. Was he on set every day? As much as he could be, yeah. Yeah, he was, you know, he, it was great having him there and it was great. A lot of the MIT students came and kind of hung out and, you know, we, we all felt part of the same team, you know, all trying to make the same movie or, you know, helping each other to try and make the same film. So, yeah, certainly from my point of view, it was great having Jeff around. Were there any uh, times on the set, I mean, it had to have been pretty fun, but were there any times that were uh, just stood out in your mind is really really fun is just a fun to film. Yeah, I mean, I, I, there was just there, I remember times when you know there was uh, you know you would just be in some nightclub pretending to get drunk. You know, <laughs> you're just like this is a very cool day of work. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and you're just kind of hanging out. There's all these you know extras everywhere and all these crazy strippers and just you know just madness kind of going on around you. And uh, yeah, you're like, yeah, if my friends could see me now, man. 
and it, it became like a real blur. I remember, like, we, I, I specifically remember this one time where we'd all been out on the weekend, and you know, we in, tried to indulge ourselves in the kind of life that Vegas kind of has to offer. I mean, we were allowed. It was kind of it was work, you know. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, I remember, like, yeah, just just getting, you know, just having a crazy night out in Vegas, and then waking up the next morning going to work and then pretty much having to recreate exactly what we'd done the night before as a sort of day at work and I was just thinking yeah I, I need to get out of Vegas I think it's, <laughs> it's all becoming a kind of mesh of blur. You know. uh, why Vegas? I, uh, MIT was so close to Atlantic City. But, um, uh, I think in the book they did go to Atlantic City as well. I think you know they it's, went to more places. They yeah. went to the Caribbean. Yeah, but I think you know Vegas is just you know, it's iconic. It's just renowned for the, you know the gambling, and it was just it was it's certain in the film just emphasized the two different worlds that they were. And easier to get lost, also. So many people. Yeah, yeah. So you know, and if you're gonna if you're gonna yeah, I mean, it's so easy to be anonymous there. You know, I'm just completely. You know, the tagline is you can be anybody you want to be, and I think that's the point. You know, and they, and they did, and they, you know, they they took on different personalities when they were out there. Well, now, can you gamble? Do you want to? Or do you, do you I can how? play blackjack, yeah, <laughs> I mean, as, as good as the next man. I mean, you know, I can play basic strategy blackjack, which I don't believe in at all, actually. When I first went to Vegas and I had no clue what I was doing, I think I earned more money than when they taught me how to play. <laughs> Beginner's luck, because, you know... Yeah, I kind of went in just, uh, you know, wide-eyed, just not knowing what I was doing. All I, all I knew at that point was that you had to kind of add up your cards to 21. So I was playing stupid, you know, I was, I was hitting when I should have been sticking and doing I was just trying to add it, get it as close to 21 as I could. And I think I put it as when I earned the most money. <laughs> what about that uh, lovely swath of dialogue in the, in the store close to the beginning when you had to calculate the order for that couple? Yeah. Was that a misery to learn? Mm. And does it really turn out? Have you? I mean, are those actual figures? They'll yeah, work yeah, out yeah. If you, if you it was hilarious, stop actually. the DVD and actually listen to it. We were so worried that people were doing that. There was about five people all coming on camera, <laughs> just making sure that it definitely was the right. You know, fifty percent of this, take it out of that. You know, so yeah, I hope <laughs> someone might catch us out, but I'm pretty sure um, we made sure it was the right calculation. Did you do that on one take or? Uh, I, I, I nailed it, yeah, I learned it pretty much, it was kind of stuck in there, I made sure. And it was important for me that when, you know, when Ben is talking talking in numbers, that it's when he's at his most confident, I think, you know, so it was important that I was confident saying those words and I wasn't kind of searching for the for the lines, you know. And uh, what can you tell us about the other movies coming out? I know you went into a few details, but... Yeah, uh, Fifty Dead Men Walking is, uh, it's another true story. Um, and it's uh, a film I did with uh, Sir Ben Kingsley, mm -hmm. who's, you know, a great, great, great actor and a great person, you know. So that was just such a, an amazing experience working with him. But I mean, for me, it was, uh, um, it's, a, you know, another true story in a very intense situation. I mean, Vegas and 21 was just a great lot of fun and, you know, and, and was important that it was like that because it should be like that and it's a fun movie to watch. Whereas this was much more kind of, it was a much more violent, intense, kind of traumatic experience for everyone involved trying to make the film. And, uh, you know, and it dealt with the IRA and it dealt with, you know, the troubles of Northern Ireland in the 1980s. And of course we were filming on all the streets where this all happened and we were kind of bringing it to life with the people who it really happened to, you know, and they had to kind of redeal with all of that. And uh, certainly uh, for, from an acting perspective was a, an opportunity to really kind of throw yourself into it a hundred percent you know I've always wanted to try that and see how far you can kind of take it and that seemed like a good project to kind of you know see what that was like and also the director came from a sort of uh, you know documentary more of a you know, documentary background so she was all for us just kind of you know she sent us off to these dodgy places in Belfast and I had to take up boxing and I, and I kept with the character for 12 weeks and you know, was just kind of thrown into this boxing gym, you know, to, the pace. to spar with these kind of you know rough kind of Belfast kids who thought that I was from Belfast, and you know, it was just uh, definitely one of the most rewarding kind of things that I've done as far as kind of acting. You know. And you had the mustache. And I, yeah, I was walking around with a hideous 1980s mustache and mullet, <laughs> which is fine when you're in the film. It's when you step out of the film, you realise that you just look complete. Whatever. You know. <laughs> 
<laughs> and the other ones were pair of support. And crossing over, yeah, that was a. I mean, that that was crazy. I mean, I was I was doing twenty one, and then I just got a I got a, a, an email from the director asking me to kind of be in his film. And I, you know, it's like, yeah, Sean Penn is in it, and Harrison Ford is in it. Sold. I'll do it. <laughs> um, and it was great. I mean, in that, as I was playing a sort of young musician, so I got to write a song for the film as well, which was really, you know, really quite cool. And, you know, we wrote the song and, and I perform it on stage as part of the, the film. I don't know how much you'll see of it in the cut, you know, probably the last dying chord. Or, but, you know, we, we did perform the whole song and they filmed it. I don't, you know, I haven't seen the film, so I don't know. But, yeah, just to kind of be involved in a film with all of those people, I mean, it was just mind-blowing.